Now we're done with the theoretical basis. You are now able to understand how unit operations uh, work. So let's keep around here. Let's talk about what we're going to see. Well, we already know about mass balances and energy balances. We know which processes can be done and which processes cannot be done. We understand the interaction between heat and work and thermal machines. And we know also the energies that help us, such as energy, kinetic energy, potential energy, internal energy, enthalpy, and so on. We understand about the equilibrium, phase equilibriums, how solid, liquid, and gas interact between each other, and how mixtures interact between each other. And we understand it, or we study a little bit on how temperature, velocity, concentrations interact with respect of distance. So we know the basis. We can understand now momentum operations, which typically is fluid mechanics mixed with a little bit operations such as pumping, compressions, and fluid uh, pumps, and so on. Now, heat transfer you will be able, since we already know the relationship between heat and enthalpy and the vapor phases and how do distance affects temperature changes, we can now model heat transfer material, well not material, equipment. Then mass transfer separation processes, since we already know about the changes in concentrations, gradients, how do they change, how mixture interact with, between each other, and I call these mixtures very importantly because essentially what you want to do in mass transfer is to mix or separate mixtures. Then reaction engineering is very important. We need a little bit on mass balances in order to be able to balance stoichiometrically the reaction. We need energy balance in order to know how much heat is going to give off the reactor. We need about thermodynamics in order to understand how much gives free energy, entropy, and all that. But more importantly, we need about physical chemistry, how equilibrium interacts with the reactions, and a little bit on transport phenomena. So those are the four subjects, core subjects. And typically, if you're in a very nice university, you will have a very good unit operation labs in which you have plenty of equipment in order to not only understand what it, this is and how it works and how to model maybe a heat exchanger, but to actually go play, understand how it works. It's not the same understanding that this flow goes from left to right and this flow goes from right to left. When you're there, you will understand why and how the temperature changes and so on. So from ab very abstract ideas, we bring it up here and understand that eventually you are wondering, uh, you are building equipment, you're designing equipment that will heat uh, and will work in a chemical plant. So that's, I would say, one of the most interesting blocks right here. I actually love all blocks, but I will say this is one of my favorite because we start interacting with the things we already know, the theory, with the practice. So yeah, see you in the next video, guys. But before that, you can see here plenty of unit operations. This one right here. And actually a unit operation can be as simple as a valve or a pipe. Or can be as complex as a reactor or this might be a cracking. It has here some ducts. Maybe these are columns, distillation column. This is definitely a distillation column maybe. And this one right here. You have a lot of pipes, ducts. You have one stage, two stages. Maybe you have, in order to move all these, you will have pumps and compressors. So you have plenty of unit operations that you will be working with in a chemical plant.